Hello friends out there in YouTube land, Robert Ham here with Robert Ham Photography. Today we are continuing our conversation about the TL70 and I'm answering your questions. My week-long journey with this so far, I've had about 100 questions from you guys through the social network channels and direct messaging and things like that. And I think I've got them rounded up to about five different categories. I'm going to give you my first five videos here. This is number one, and it comes from a viewer whom I hope to meet soon. And it's always active in the comments. His name is Andre Dominguez. I'm talking about you, buddy. And I should be coming down to North Carolina in the next two weeks, kind of postponing a little bit. But as always, I'll give you a call when I do. And when I do, just so you know, the TL7 is my tag along camera. So uh, that's going to be what we're taking pictures with that day. Uh, Andre asks uh, this question, and he says to me real quick, he says, Hey, Rob, I can't remember if I already wrote this comment on a previous video, but I noticed that the ND filter set that Mint sells doesn't cover the electronic eye. It only covers the lens itself. Now, how would this affect shooting on a bright, sunny day? I think that's a great question. And you know what? I thought the same thing when I was looking at where the eye placement was and the lens filter set was. And that's important because as you look right here, if you put a lens cap on this, I don't know where my lens cap is, it doesn't actually cover the actual eye itself. It just kind of doesn't cover it at all. And then I got to thinking about it and it doesn't need to cover it. That's the beauty of it. The electronic eye is the meter. You want it to meter and some cameras will meter through the lens that are usually metering off the actual film itself. Even my Olympus 35RD actually has a meter that's inside the lens itself right there. So if you put a filter on it, it's inside where the filter would be. So, hey, great bonus. But that's just one way of actually making that happen. That's not how it has to be done. That's just one convenient way to do it that includes metering for whatever filter that you might want to use. And you see, that's very important for film photography. For example, if you're going to go out and shoot black and white film on a very cloudy day and you wanted to show the contrast in the sky, you might use an orange or a yellow filter. If you wanted to um, block the blue, you might use a, a blue light filter. You might use a red filter for infrared. You might do all kinds of different things. And then that actually has an effect directly on the film because you're stopping some part of the light and that will change the exposure. Remember, film, as in what we think of film, not instant film, has a very wide exposure latitude. And so metering through the actual adapter or lens that you're using, the filter itself, is very helpful there. Now, when we continue thinking about Instax film, we know that Instax film the capabilities are much different than regular film. You've probably got about a 10 EV range either way before you crush it, and you probably only have about eight to nine stops of dynamic range that the film can show, maybe 10 if you really can nuance it with the lens. And I think, I think we can get many more stops. I think we can actually get about 10 stops of dynamic range with this lens. And my shot with my son hanging in the tree, if you haven't seen that, go check it out on Instagram. It shows the wide range that this lens can resolve. Now, remember, um, exposure values have to do with metering light and the film's capability to actually render it. Dynamic range, DR, has to do with the medium's ability to actually display it. So two mutually exclusive things. Continuing on with your answer, we don't really need it because the, we don't want to change on a bright sunny day the fact that the camera can use up to one five hundredth of a second. We want to ensure consistency. So if you want to shoot outdoors with a big bright aperture and you put the neutral density filter on it that does not cover the electronic eye, then the camera will still think that it's metering for a bright sunny day. It will maintain and give you a very uh, quick exposure up to one five hundredth of a second. You'll have access to more of your EV controls right there. You can slow it down if you'd like to one four hundred or one two fiftieth. I don't know which one it chooses, but one complete stop lower. I don't know that the camera uses intermediate stops. It may use just an algorithm that allows for one stop or another. So if it was one five hundredth of a second and you put it on brighter exposure, uh, exposure compensation, you would get one two fiftieth of a second. But you wouldn't really need to do any of that because if you were recognizing the light and we're out on a bright sunny day, we want to shoot f5.6, that's probably an ND8 that we'll need on here in order to get the correct exposure with the 5.6 aperture. And then you'll be good to go. Now, here's what would happen if you did put the ND filter on, and if the ND filter did cover the electronic eye, then you would get a much longer exposure time because you're getting a, you're blocking, you're gating the light that's hitting that little sensor. 
And what that would do is give you a very similar exposure because of the reciprocal values. It would, you know, you can use an ND filter, you can reciprocate any of the shutter speed values or aperture values or ISO values in the film. It's all reciprocal. But you'd introduce longer exposure times. And then that speaks to the reciprocity of the film and whether or not the film is going to show different coloration or streaking or this or that. Now, that may not happen so much during the day, but the one thing it could introduce is camera shake, handshake. So I think the way that Mint took the approach to putting this together is actually the right approach. I think putting the eye on the outside, allowing it to meter the scene, maintaining consistency, and then you, the photographer, choosing which neutral density filter to use, I think that's the best, uh, best outcome. You might say, man, I might waste some film like that. And I'd say, sure, but at some point in time, you won't. This camera right here is so extraordinarily capable, I believe you need to earn it. I think when I got that shot of my son in the trees, I earned that shot. You see, that wasn't, that shot didn't happen because I wasn't thinking. I've got some more in roll six I'll share with you that I should have gotten better. I should have been thinking because I had the information, but it didn't happen that way because I just stopped thinking I was going too fast. See, once you gain the experience, it's up to us as photographers to use it. This camera will help you read light better, especially if you're used to shooting digital, where the digital is giving you a live view and you don't read light very often. This camera will definitely help you. And why not train on something that's instant, memorable, and the best option out there for manual controls? This is fully aperture priority. You control the aperture. I think it's great. Guys, I'm Robert Hand with roberthandphotography.com. You can catch me over on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to see one of the shots that I was talking about, follow me over on Instagram. That's where I'm posting all of this work and a little story about each one and pro tips on those images. I want to thank you for watching. I want to remind you that I'll catch you on the flip side.